Yeah, no, yeah. Right. Yeah. Jesus. You were late. Hey, it's all right. I had lunch today. A little hot sauce again. Hot sauce sandwiches for me. Hot sauce. Get against the wall. Get against the wall now. Oh my god! Hey! Okay, we're doing it. What do you want? What do you need? I'm Michael Bain for The Best Defense. An active shooter, a shooter in our workplace, has become our very own urban nightmare. Now, we talk a lot about awareness and avoidance on The Best Defense, but sometimes even those superb skills can't save you. Sometimes, especially in an active shooter situation, you're going to need to react. And you're going to need to react perfectly. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I'll be there in just a minute. I just have to forward the phones first. All right, so okay. Forward. Okay. Get against the wall. Get against the wall now. Oh my god! Hey! It's okay, we're doing it. Whatever you want. What do you need? What? What? What are you doing? Calm down, man. Calm down. Hey! Hey! Your self-defense is your responsibility. I've been preaching for years that individual skill set and the ability or the desire to act, to take action, is the only way you can really guarantee your safety. Exactly right. Yeah, when you look at the statistics, the FBI and their study on active shooters revealed that 43% of active shooter incidents are over before the police arrive. That's nearly half of the incidents. They're finished before the police get there. So relying on them to get there to keep you safe isn't a viable option. You need to be able to take some kind of action. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Still a little hot sauce on it. Yeah, hot sauce sandwich. Get against the wall. Hey, get against the wall. Hey, hey. Do what you say. We'll do what you say. Hey. She's gonna hurt us. She's gonna hurt us. Hey. <laughs> Can't hide from me. You know, there are two key points in this scenario that, that, that stand out to me. Is number one, you know, you may be a concealed carry holder and someone that is armed on a routine basis and trains all the time. You know, you go to the range, you shoot a lot, you're very, very skilled. But there may be that environment that's non permissive that you can't be armed in. So you got to have empty handed combative skills. You need to have them as well as a plan. And number two, if you plan on utilizing some sort of technique against someone, you've got to have pressure tested that skill and trained it repetitively. Exactly right. Awareness is more than just looking for specific threats around you. It's also being aware of the limitations of your environment. And if you work in a non-permissive environment, you have to think about this eventuality. Stuff like this does happen. And one of the things that really irritates me is when you see media reports of incidents like this, in many cases they'll use terms like overpowering an attacker or tackling an attacker or something like that. That gives people the wrong idea of what they really need to do to survive in that situation. You're not playing football. You're not tackling somebody. You need to take that person out of the fight. You need to physically incapacitate them and keep them from killing you or killing others. So what you need to think about is the commitment that it takes to do that and the skill to do it well. Hello, darling. I'm sorry, I had to the phones. How are you? Yeah. How's everybody's lunch? What did you guys have? Uh, it's it's a little hog size. Get against the wall. Get against the wall. Do what you say. Do what you say. Stay on the ground! Somebody call 911! Stay down! Don't move!
Having the will to fight for your life is important, but having the skill to do it effectively is just as important, possibly more important, in a desperate situation like an active shooter. Yeah, and you, the unique thing is, Mike, he pulled off a, a brilliant third-party disarm and then had the ability to de-escalate. He took the gun away and, and used yeah. some strikes and can, can de-escalate. And that's the thing about having a skill set. If you have a high level of skill, and the only way you're going to have a high level of skill is to dedicate yourself to training. But with that high level of skill, it gives you options. Whether it's escalate or de-escalate, and options are always a good thing to have under stress. So we've showed you a very successful third-party disarm. Join us after the break. We're going to show you the technique behind that move. I know for a fact that I have to take decisive action. I drive this offline, pull this in tight, rotate my shoulders back, peel that thumb off, strike to the face, strike again. The game is changing. Most tournaments, people have an idea, you know, not in Major League Fishing. Oh my goodness, that's the one. You're gonna have to take some risks. Seriously, stay out. Woo! <laughs> yes! Jack Link's Major League Fishing. All new tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern. Only an Outdoor Channel. Why let good food go bad when you can save your food with the new 2-in-1 Food Saver System? The only vacuum sealing brand proven to keep food fresh up to five times longer. The new Food Saver 2-in-1 system gives you more ways to seal and more ways to save. And it's the only brand shown to save you up to $2,700 a year, year after year after year. So save your food and save your money with the Food Saver System, America's original and number one vacuum sealing brand. It's always the same dilemma. Who gets the Allstate Safe Driving Bonus Check? Rock beats scissors. <laughs> Wife beats rock. And with two checks a year, everyone wins. Switch today and get two safe driving bonus checks a year for driving safely only from Allstate. Call 866-906-8500 now. Zach really loves his new camera. Problem is, this isn't Zach. It's a friend of a friend who was at Zach's party and stole his camera. But Zach's got it covered with Allstate Renters Insurance. Protect your valuables for as low as $4 a month when you add renters insurance to your Allstate auto policy. Call 866-906-8500 now. What are you doing? We're switching car insurance. Why? Because these guys are the cheapest. Why? Good question. Because a cut rate price could mean cut rate protection. You should listen to this guy. With Allstate, you get great protection and a great price, plus an agent. Drivers who switch saved an average of $498 a year. Call now and see how much you can save. Just a few more ways Allstate is changing car insurance for good. Call an Allstate agent and get a quote now. Saturdays on Outdoor Channel. Start your weekend with fishing action at its best on Chevy Silverado Saturdays. Climb on board with the top pros in the world of fishing sports. Get up in here. Then buckle up and hold on tight as we take you on angling adventures around the world. That might be the biggest sailfish I've ever caught. From the monsters of the deep. There we go. To the largemouth in your backyard. Yeah. We've got it all on Silverado Saturdays starting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Outdoor Channel. The best defense. Brought to you by galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. And by Car Arms, a leader in technology and innovation. So decisive action is sometimes necessary in a circumstance that we can't escape or avoid or whatever else. And in this particular scenario, our guy took decisive action in a situation that both saved his life and the life of someone else. He took it at a time that was the right time and he used the right technique. Another handgun disarm and Mike's gonna show you that handgun disarm, Mike. Again, decisive action, as Mike said, is the key. And you also wanna make sure that when you're approaching this stuff, you do so by having as much commonality of skill as possible. We've looked at handgun disarms before on the best defense. What you wanna do is draw from the skills you already have, not have a specific technique for every specific situation. So like everything we do, we wanna make sure that we're playing safely. First of all, blue gun, my only other weapon, training knife here. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through the scenario as we had it uh, in this event. I was basically third person in line. The good guy was third person in line. When that first shot goes off, there's no doubt what's going on. As he's coming over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same skills that I've looked at before when it comes to handgun disarms. So let's take a look at that and review that real quickly. When we're disarming from the front, if I was in this situation here, I'd wanna deflect 
the gun this way, pull it back in tight, pull the thumb off the gun, orient the muzzle back toward the person, and then be able to strike with it. Those mechanics are sound. Those are things that I've already trained. What I want to do is take that, put that into the same context here. The only difference really is I'm approaching from the side. So what I can do in this position, I'm here, I drive powerfully this way, deflect that gun, get it off of this person, try to intervene and save this person's life. Same thing here, once I've deflected this with both hands, pushing this arm away, left hand curls around the base of the thumb, I'm gonna pull everything in tight toward my body. So I'm using my back muscles to pull this in tightly here. That gives me a really solid control over the gun. Again, the key to the strength of Mike's grip is his thumb. So as I turn and rotate my shoulders toward him, I'm gonna peel that thumb off the gun, orient the muzzle toward him, strike him with the muzzle, continue to strike and follow up, and then assess the condition of the firearm, be able to use that against him if necessary. So with a little bit more enthusiasm, let's go through it. Bam! Bang. <laughs> okay. Now one of the things with this, again, we wanna have commonality of technique. Let's say that Mike was left-handed. We've got the same thing going on, same mechanics, all the other rules still apply. I don't wanna to have to change my technique and think about doing something different. Again, commonality of technique, commonality of skill. So as I come off here, I deflect the gun. I pull it in, as I rotate this back, we're training here with Mike's index finger in the trigger guard, this would break the finger. I would strike, clear that, continue to follow up. For safety and training, Mike will not put his finger in the trigger guard. Again, I deflect this, pull this in, be able to strip here, continue to strike. If he was two-handed on his grip, let's say right hand primary grip, but reinforced by left support hand. Again, same thing applies, same technique. I deflect, pull in tight to where you're strong, and very importantly, notice my shoulder's turning. I'm driving this way, peeling that thumb off. This also is breaking the grip with his left hand. Strike and follow up. Then again, take control over the gun, assess it, be able to use it to your advantage. Again, when it comes to training for techniques that are gonna save your life, you wanna keep things simple, and you wanna have as much common technique as possible. You don't wanna think about having a specific technique for a specific circumstance. You wanna have good general skills and the ability to adapt those skills to a broad set of circumstances. I love the consistency of the technique because one-handed, you know, left-handed, right-handed, two-handed, it's all gonna work. Yep. Um, but one thing, though, is during these disarms, there's a very good chance that the gun is gonna go off. I'm gonna show you some things that are gonna surprise you, as well as show you how to stop the gun from going off if they carry a particular type of gun right after the break. So now I'm gonna leverage just a little bit of pressure on the slide itself, and I'm gonna have him fire a shot. Ready? Yep, here we go. Watch what happened, folks. My hand is not injured, it's not burned, I'm not destroyed. Hey everybody, Chef Brian Duffy here. Who doesn't love a really good burger? You know, you can make them the old way, but one of the hottest trends right now is the stuffed burger. Just look at this burger. How'd I get everything inside? With stuffs. Stuffs is so easy to use, and trust me, if you try to make a stuffed burger without it, it's only gonna be a mess. Here's what you do. One, press your base. Look at how deep that cup is. Two, fill with stuffing. Three, add your top patty and press. That's it, Stuffs makes the most amazing, perfectly sealed patty every time. Look at that. This patented little wonder is gonna make you master the ultimate America's stuffed burger. Look amazing? It is. With Stuffs, your recipes are endless. Chili, cheese, jalapeno, yeah, that works. Mushrooms and Swiss cheese, it is all inside. How about some garlic, a little fresh spinach, some sun-dried tomatoes and Parmesan? Insanely good. And my daughter's favorite, mac and cheese. Don't knock it till you try it. With Stuffs, it's easy, it's fun, and the whole family will create their own signature stuffed burger. Ground chicken, ham and Swiss cheese, yup, it's a cordon bleu chicken burger. That's what we're talking about. Look at this. Use stuffs with some ground turkey as well. Got your wheels turning now. Little bacon, jalapeno, blue cheese, call it what you want. This is the best stuffed turkey burger ever. You and your family are gonna have a blast with stuffs because the recipes, they're endless. I use stuffs in all of my restaurants and now you can do the same right at home. You're gonna love this. Call now or order online to get stuffs for only $9.99. And when you do, Chef Duffy will send you a second stuffs absolutely free. That's two stuffs for only $9.99. Here's how to get yours today. To order, call 1-800-256-1363. That's 1-800-256-1363. Or go online at buystuffs.com. Call or click today.
there's no better way to learn how to use a long gun well than to shoot with a Rimfire 22. This little round is accurate and effective and has light recoil, and compared to most modern rounds, has virtually no loud boom. These attributes make it easy to practice proper marksmanship simply because there's nothing to distract you from concentrating on the fundamentals of good shooting. The 22 is the perfect first rifle because no kick and no boom take away the fear that can be a barrier to learning solid basics when you're just getting started. And because it's cheaper to shoot, the 22 long rifle is a platform you'll want to shoot more often, and that's good, because that's what it takes when you want to develop the skills for consistent accuracy and proper handling. And it's versatile too. You can find a 22 in single shot, bolt action, lever action, or semi-automatic. There's plenty of options, and you can create almost any configuration to complement a larger bore rifle. With the right setup, a 22 shooter can go from recreational plinking to small game hunting and even to long range precision shooting, all on the same platform. That's why the Time Honor 22 earns a place in any gun owner's safe. I'm liking a lot of handgun disarming techniques. People focus on a lot of minutia. Is it a single action gun? Is it a double action gun? Striker fired, all those different dynamics. I like to keep it simple. I like to focus on the idea of getting the gun offline, being able to bring it in tight, strip the, the hand off the gun, and then be able to use it against the attacker. But with that said, understanding the mechanics of a gun can still be very important, especially if a round goes off. Right, I, you know, and Mike and folks, I think the round, the gun is probably going to go off. The reality is during the fight, you're probably going to have a situation where a finger is going to get inside the trigger guard and or their finger that's already on the trigger with a lighter trigger or a cheaper gun is going to go off. But you're going to be surprised what happens when that gun goes off if you're in the right position. And I want to remind you of the key principle, which is utilize his techniques of deflecting and getting your body out of the way, assuming that a round is going to go off. But come up to the target, let me show you a few things about ha handguns that a lot of people don't realize. What we're gonna do is go live fire, so we've got eye and ear protection in place, of course. I'm gonna take my handgun out here. What I have here is a Glock 19 9 millimeter. This is a full power, 124 grain arm score ammo. So when I fire this shot, I'm gonna fire one test shot into the target, or actually to the side of the target, because I don't wanna shoot right away. I just wanna show you that it's a full power recoiling round. So that said, a lot of people believe or would not believe that if I get something on this slide to stop the slide, how easy it is to stop the slide itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some tests. Before I do my test though, I wanna remind you, this is one of those things that I would prefer you not try at home. We've been doing this for years and years. We've, uh, we've trained together for years. We've tested these things. And if you do decide to try this test, try it with a single round only in the gun. But I caution you, Folks, don't try this at home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the gun, point it at the target, and I'm gonna take my hand in a safe position. I'm simply gonna put it on the grasping grooves of the slide. So I'm simply gonna secure it, and I'm not really grabbing the slide very hard, and I'm gonna fire a shot. And you might think, oh my gosh, it's gonna rip the skin on my hand off, but it really doesn't do anything. And if you watch what comes out of the gun, watch what comes out of the gun, it's an empty brass. So it's an empty piece of brass. And you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, Mike, you can stop the slide by simply grabbing it with the grasping grooves. You know, you've got some, some uh, abrasiveness, some aggression there. You could grab it pretty effectively. But what happens if I take my pinky finger and put it on the back of the gun and, and stop the slide itself and pull the trigger? One of two things is gonna happen. Either it's gonna rip my pinky off or it's gonna stop the slide, okay? And once again, if you watch what's going on here, you see what comes out of the gun, an empty piece of brass, that's awesome. And lo and behold, folks, my pinky is still intact and usable. So to demonstrate how effective this is, what I want to do is I want to borrow you real qu uh, quickly, Mike, and I'm going to hand you safely this live firearm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up in a position where I've already done my deflection and control the handgun. Now, when I do this, I'm being very deliberate where I actually put my hand itself. I put it up on the slide. Now, when I do this, if you try this at home, once again, I recommend against it, but do it with a glove on because I'm gonna have some gas in the ejection port itself that's gonna go on my hand, but it's not gonna hurt me that bad. So Mike, go ahead and put your finger in the trigger guard. So I'm gonna grab the slide itself and none of my body parts are in front of the muzzle. Mike, will you verify you're safe with that? Hand is clear. Okay, so now I'm gonna leverage just a little bit of pressure on the slide itself, and I'm gonna have him fire a shot. Ready? Yep. Here we go. 
Watch what happened, folks. And this is not hard. My hand is not injured, it's not burned, I'm not destroyed. Now, at this point in time, and it's really good because we've got a great visual of it, the slide is in a position where, and don't pull it through, this is an unfireable weapon. So at this point in time, during my disarm, I deflected the gun, I've controlled it, now I've got truly a dead firearm. Mike pulled the trigger and tried to shoot again. Triggered now, I'm reset. not gonna do the full disarm because once again, it is a live firearm and I'm not gonna point the gun toward the camera, but my point is, I could point the gun in any direction and he can't shoot it until he taps the magazine and racks the slide or racks the slide. All right, thanks very much. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this real quick. I'm gonna holster up. Another con key concept is, if your bad guy has a revolver, and I've got an unloaded Ruger revolver here, Mike, nothing in the cylinder. It's clear. Standard revolver, this double action, I pull the trigger, the hammer goes back. If Mike were armed with a revolver when I did this disarm, and I've done my perfect deflection, grip the revolver itself, two things you're gonna notice is his disarming technique will work with a gun that's shorter than the full-size guns. So notice how instead of my hand out on the barrel, I simply have my hand on the cylinder. If Mike wants to shoot or tries to shoot while we're in the tussle here, and I haven't done my disarm or I'm not effective, I've got two things going on. Number one, I can stop it by pinching the cylinder. Go ahead and pull the trigger, Mike. As hard as you can. Can't Nothing do it. going on. Number two, on a revolver, notice this thumb would hook around behind the hammer. If there's a hammer on the back of the hammerless revolver, try to pull the trigger now. He's got nothing. So I could tussle, fight. As long as I maintain this grip on the revolver, I can affect do that full disarm. I'm gonna stop right there because of the camera angle and it'll work very effectively. That's okay? awesome. So we're talking about utilizing the mechanics of the handgun to your advantage. It's, it's, it's key that you understand that the gun is probably going to go off during the disarm. And as long as you follow those principles and your body is out of the way, hopefully there's nobody in the background. You don't hit anybody. You're not gonna get shot yourself. And at that point in time, it's a dead handgun. So if things happen and your hand slipped off the gun and you use additional combatives or strikes or whatever else, remember you've got a few seconds to take the handgun away and it can't fire. So may surprise you, once again as a reminder, don't try the picky thing at home. I'm a trained professional, but it won't rip your pinky off. Saturday, back straps beware. The Whackmaster is having a Michigan family reunion. That was crazy. Ted Nugent, Spirit of the Wild. He's all new Saturday night at midnight, only on Outdoor Channel. Golden Corral is the best deal in America. You can't beat the price or the food or the triple fountain yum. For one low price, it's everything you love at Golden Corral, including the incomparable triple fountain yum. Only at Golden Corral. Best deal in America. Period. Why do you work hard? Not because you have to. Not because some boss told you to. But because that's what you were born to do. And that deserves the best we can do. Admit it. You never thought you'd see this day. The day you could walk without shooting pain in your back. All because you took the first step and had surgery at Laser Spine Institute. The experts in outpatient minimally invasive neck and back surgery. All it takes is an incision less than one inch and you'll be up and walking within a few hours of surgery and there is no lengthy recovery. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica or other chronic conditions, call today for a free MRI review. And when I had that back surgery, I had immediate relief. I was 100% pain free. Don't do what I did. Don't wait. Take your life back. If you've been told you might need neck or back surgery, call 1-855-502-STEP for a free MRI review. Go from a life of pain to a lifetime of living. Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. What's better than one million a year for life? The Publishers Clearinghouse One Million a Year Forever Prize. Win one million a year for your life. Then after that, someone you choose gets a million a year for their life. Enter at PCH.com in February 28th, win forever. The Best Defense. Brought to you by GalleryofGuns.com. Search, find, buy. And by Car Arms, a leader in technology and innovation.
This season on The Best Defense, it's all about answering your questions. And my favorite so far this year has been, do you ever clean your guns at all? And the answer is, I clean them as much as necessary. One of the things about competition, a lot of years of competition, is you get used to the idea that guns don't have to be completely disassembled, broken all the way down, every part meticulously cleaned for them to run. You learn what you have to do to keep the machine going. And that's exactly what I like to do, especially with carry guns. If I do a complete breakdown, a detail strip, and clean every part of this gun, I need to take it out to the range and run 10, 15, 20 rounds through it to make sure that everything is copacetic before I bring it back into service. Typically, I'll clean the bore, I'll clean around the action, I'll do what's necessary to make sure the gun runs. A couple of things that helps me out, the Otis cleaning kits. I carried one recently around the world, just so I would have it on a around the world hunting trip. I had the Otis kit with me the entire time, and I'd use it to every so often go through the bore of the gun, clean out the action. Another item that's recently come to my attention because they said, hey, we hear you never cleaned your guns, maybe we can help you are from bore tips. These are bore tips, basically the cleaning patch and a little jag is all in one unit, if you can see that. So it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. You can then clean these with mineral spirits. Anything I can do to make cleaning the gun faster, I will do it because I need to spend the time shooting. I need to spend the time training. I need to spend the time practicing. Time cleaning the gun takes away from that. The legalities of use of deadly force to stop an active shooter from a murderous rampage is very clear. In every jurisdiction in the land, if a person has the ability to stop the attack, he would be justified in doing so. But many uses of deadly force and self-defense are not clear-cut, and the armed citizen finds himself being arrested and prosecuted for that act of self-defense. The Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network stands ready to assist its members in fighting an unmeritorious prosecution or civil lawsuit. We also understand the nuances of having to make a self-defense defense. For information as to how to join the network, please see our website at www.armedcitizensnetwork.org. To borrow a phrase from our friends in the poker industry, you play the cards you're dealt. And in the case of an active shooter, those are just about the worst cards that you can be dealt. But the key point here is that if you're quick, if you're smart, if you've thought these things out in advance, you have a chance of getting you, the people important to you, out of that kill zone. This is The Best Defense. I'm Michael Bain. Stay safe.